Chapter 19, the last one. Mrs. Carey excused Efren from the office a few minutes before the nutrition break bell. However, instead of lining up early and getting his lunch first, Efren headed back upstairs to the quad area to wait for David. When the bell rang, everybody, everyone passing by stopped and gathered, hoping to watch the biggest fight of the century. Efren didn't care about the kids that circling him and asking questions. He looked around, finally noticing David coming his way. But instead of shouting out insult at David like everyone around them expected, Efren calmly walked over and extended his hand. The kids watching all booed and hissed before heading off in different directions. Thanks, David, Efren said. That was really cool of you. Even after what I did to you, you still have my back. David just kind of shrugged. Just returning the favor. Favor? What favor? When I moved here, you never treated me differently, even if I was the only white kid on the entire block. You always called me an honorary Mexican and introduced me to your friends and showed me the ropes. You even taught me all of the Spanish wor words I needed, starting with the bad ones. Efren laughed. Suddenly, the world didn't seem like such a horrible place. Sure, there was someone on campus who didn't like Latinos, but right now, that didn't matter. Efren had his best friend back. Well, I've got your back too, said Efren. That's why I'm dropping out of the race. David shook his head. No, thanks. Efren squished his eyebrows together. Dude, you're my best friend. I can't run against you. You deserve it. You proved that today. Besides, after what happened to my poster, I don't want anything to do with any election. David shook his head. You can't quit. I was running just so people would stop thinking I was stupid. But I would be stupid if I let whoever messed up your posters win. No way. You will be, he held up his hands in the air, our next presidente. I don't know. Besides, what about you? David smirked. Vice president is more my style. Come on, Efron. You can do it for your ama. Do it for your ama. Efren looked up. Wait, you know what happened to her? Yep, my grandma heard it about it while at the 99 cent store. Like you, she trusted me enough to tell me. Unlike you, she trusted me enough to tell you, to tell me. Yesterday, I sat across the street from your apartment for hours, hoping to see your ama again. Efren pressed his lips together, felt them trembling. Efron, David continued. Why didn't you tell me? Efren looked at the ground. I tried. It just hurt too much to say aloud. David's eyes blinked over time. Dude. And without saying another word, he leaned forward and gave his Efron the longest bro hug the school had ever seen. You forget. Your ma's treated me like I was her son. More than my own mom, even. I'll never forget the year your ma bought me a belt for my birthday. Said she was tired of seeing my calzones. Efren started to laugh, cry. So did David. Seriously, this school needs you, said David, wiping his eyes. You really think I could make a difference? David nodded. Yeah, I do. You taught me that the color of my skin doesn't matter. Only now this school, heck, the whole world needs to be reminded. A voice chimed in. Is this a private party or can we join in? It was Jennifer along with Han. Efren wiped his eyes dry. We were just talking. Yeah, obviously, said Han. Efren, or Jennifer pulled Efren's resignation letter from his sweater pocket and waved it in the air. So what are we going to do about what happened? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Presidente, added David. Efren reached for the letter and held it up close as if he could hear it speaking to him. He took a long breath. So, asked Han. Only Efren didn't answer. He looked up ahead at the wrought iron fence surrounding the school and sighed. He walked up to the cold fence, curled his fin curling his fingers around the solid bars. He thought back to El Muro, the border wall, back to the faces he'd seen. Men, women, and children waiting in line to see the people they love. Muro kids. That's what he, Max, and Mio were now. For now, from now on, they'd each have to poke their fingers through the bar simply to feel Amon's touch. Her touch. Something a pa would now be without. With him unable to go anywhere near the wall, he would never get to see her again. No, Efren could never not give up. He would not give up on back scratches, morning sco sco sopes, or the funny character voices Amma made during bedtime readings. Ever since he could remember, he'd seen Amma and Appa pulling out, off different milagros out of thin air. Whether the miracles were scraping together money for food or sewing together a pair of pants out of one of the house towels for the twins to wear, soper woman and soper man always found a way to, of providing for the family. He would not be a Murrow boy. Not today, not ever. David, Jennifer, and Han came up to him. Efren turned to them. I can start a campaign to educate parents. Let them understand their rights. Maybe get a few schools to join us. You guys will help me, right? Efren asked. Everyone nodded. Okay. With his mind finally made up, he tore the resignation letter in half. There would be no quitting today. No, not for all this, 
for all the semeyitas like him, he couldn't stay buried any longer. The time had come for him to be the change he wanted to see. The time had come for him to be sulper too, to be sulper to boy. And then there's a glossary of those are the Spanish words. Acknowledgements and a little bit about Ernesto Cisneros. Thanks for listening.